Hi, I'm Pat Dunn, and this is my video blog. <clears throat> so things are going decently. Uh, the weather's getting uh, getting nicer. I've been running a little bit more often, taking more walks. Uh, it's just nicer to have more more daylight, and not feeling the bitter cold of uh, of winter in New York City. I mean, I guess anywhere in the north, you're going to have kind of lousy weather during the winter. Um, one of my cats is eating an apple right now. Uh, yeah, she's a bit of an oddball. Um, so over the last week, so the last time I recorded one of these, it was the end of PGCOMP uh, NYC 2014. So that was last Thursday and Friday. On Saturday, I went, uh, went to a transit museum walking tour of the uh, the seven line now the um, the transit museum it's run by the MTA New York City's uh, public transit uh, organization company it's, I mean I guess we're we're used to uh, corporation we're kind of used to the idea of corporations actually being private sector but technically I think cities and towns are corporations uh, as well they're public corporations um, and they have a certain mandated structure. Uh, Anyhow, the Transit Museum is a group, I think, within the MTA. I have no idea if they're legally distinct or not. There's probably a lot of interesting esoteria there. Uh, they have a, a museum uh, sort of near Brooklyn City Hall, and I think they have part of Grand Central uh, to, to show exhibits in, too. But they do tours, and so this was a tour of the Seven Line, which is one of the weirder uh, subway lines in New York City. And uh, and the 7, it's it's a fairly old uh, old line, or at least the, the bits of it that we saw. We started in Queens and uh, talked about how the platform that we were on, I think it was uh, Queensboro Station, uh, it used to be much bigger, but they, they trimmed it down after cutting some lines off of it. Uh, we ended up riding into Manhattan and then walking down the area where the seven extension is going to be uh, because right now uh, the seven ends at one of the 42nd Street stations but it's going to uh, it's currently slowly being extended westwards and then southwards to it's what was it called something yards Hudson yards I think um, and so they're building that extension they're uh, there's the possibility that they'll be extending it all the way into Jersey, which would be interesting because right now I don't think the MTA, I don't think any of the regular subway lines go into uh, into Jersey. I mean, there are uh, path trains that do uh, do so, but it would be nice for people to have more options to get uh, to and from Jersey from New York City. And it might cause that kind of islandy structure. It's not really an island, but it looks kind of like Manhattan. Uh, uh, but it's in Jersey, it might cause a lot of further development of that if it's better connected to uh, to Manhattan. Um, so it was a neat tour, uh, long, kind of exhausting, uh, but enjoyable. Uh, then on the 6th, that is last Sunday, uh, I went to a musical event uh, where uh, some people that I know, they, uh, one of my cats is yelling, Torts, come here! Um, come here. Uh, where th uh, they were, there was a mix of singing and philosophy. Come on, come on. Torts, come here. Ah, he'll come when I call, but he's a little bit reluctant to just uh, be grabbed. Come here. It's okay. Oh, probably because. Ah, oh, there we go. Um,. Yeah, it was, it was a mix of music and philosophy. Uh, the music was on philosophical, secular topics. Uh, pretty neat. Um, good way to spend an evening. Met some neat people. Talked about neuroscience um, afterwards. On Monday, I had a phone call with a prospective part-time employer that didn't quite end up working out. Um, I'm often surprised that uh, that employers seem to want such uh, specific things of 
the people that uh, that they would hire. The there seems to be an unwillingness to either train people or to hire people who don't quite specialize in what uh, in what they're looking for, and then they generally kvetch that they can't find qualified people. I mean, you have to be willing to put into the pot if you're going to take out of the pot. And um, I mean, this this seemed like it was a, a neat company, uh, and it it is something which I think I would be quite qualified to do. Actually, without any additional training, it's a little bit outside my specialty. But, oh, um, so after that phone call, I, uh, I saw, so the McCain Institute, it's a political organization that might be more or less affiliated with John McCain, although I really have no idea what their ties are, but they were doing a, uh, a round table on uh, Russian propaganda and the current situation in the Ukraine. Um, it was pretty neat. It wasn't quite as exciting as it might have been, but it was okay. Uh, it was held on Google Plus, and that's it's interesting how there are plenty of organizations that don't have much of a presence on Google Plus, but they find the uh, Google Plus Hangouts to be a pretty compelling feature. So they'll use it just for that, um, which is fine. Uh, I I actually use Google Plus uh, for a lot more than that, but. Um, I guess they're just doing what makes sense for them. And, uh, let's see, did I end up going to... Yeah, there was an event at AMNH that evening on Continental Crust Formation, but I ended, I just was kind of tired, so I uh, skipped it. Uh, on Tuesday, I had a migraine for most of the day, and I didn't end up doing anything. Uh, on Wednesday... Uh, I signed up for, uh, or well, no, on Wednesday, I I did another uh, Google Plus Hangout where uh, AM and H was talking about uh, um, about the impact of uh, of climate change on coral reefs, and then after that, I went for an evening in the co uh, in the cosmos with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he was talking about his experiences uh, experiences recording uh, cosmos and. It was pretty cool. Uh, there was a, in, in the question and answer se session afterwards, there was a really brilliant question by a young girl, like maybe age nine or ten, and she asked, um, which planet formed first? And I've just never thought to ask that, that question before. It's such a great question. And the answer uh, that, uh, that Neil deGrasse Tyson gave was, we don't know for sure, but according to our current uh, Current theories: the bigger planets probably form first. So Jupiter, uh, presumably, would be the, or at least it's our best guess as to what planet formed first in our solar system. Really cool, and I'm I'm really a big fan of the efforts to find planets in other solar systems. It's nice that we're we have at least uh, reasonable intuitions for uh, how. How, planet, uh, how planetary formation works. It's just one of those areas of science. Uh, I mean, remote imaging of other, uh, other uh, solar systems, fun stuff, really interesting stuff. And it's, it's nice to know that as a species, we're looking out there and trying to figure out what else is, uh, is in the universe, uh, what our immediate vicinity looks like. I mean, there are a few other great topics in science like uh, pluripotency research where you can immediately see uh, endless applications and uh, the, uh, the opening up of new areas of science. Maybe I should explain what plur uh, pluripotency is. So uh, right when you're born, you have a stem cell and, uh, and an egg cell. They, uh, a, a, a sperm cell and an egg cell. They come together. The egg cell is fertilized. You have mixing of the DNA. And then what you have is a type of cell that uh, can produce any type of uh, any type of uh, cell that's found in the human body. I mean, it has to. Uh, you're, you're, you start with one cell, and everything after that divides. Your cells become increasingly specialized as they become, or as they're placed in the part of the body where their descendants will live. Like skin cells are very different from lung cells, and you can't go from one to, uh, to the other, vice versa. So, uh, 
So, yeah, as you, uh, so the specialization of cells, uh, I don't fully understand the mechanism by which uh, cells become uh, specialized. Um, it might have something to do with epigenetics. It might not. Um, maybe epigenetics is only for, uh, it might only be for, for haploid cells. But, but um, in any case, yeah, normally you can't go from very specialized cells to less specialized cells. Um, your cells lose that uh, that flexibility, um, or they, they lose that sort of potency. That is, potency, the ability to, uh, well, yeah, they, they, the, the ability to, to be multiple potents, to be able to produce more than one kind. They lose that as they specialize, but there's been a lot of research recently in reversing that, going from highly specialized cells to relatively generic cells that then might be nudged to uh, to turn into other types of cells entirely. Why this is exciting is that it means that, first off, we can avoid the need to harvest some uh, stem cells, which makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Uh, plenty of people think that stem cells are essentially humans, or, or at least the ways that they've been harvested in the past have typically been from uh, uh, cell lines from aborted fetuses, uh, things like that. So if we could produce stem cells without going through such, uh, without either depending on existing lines or harvesting new lines from those sources, people will be a lot more ethically comfortable. And that means that all of the types of all, all of the benefits that come from uh, from stem cells, uh, or that can come from things produced by stem cells, artificial organs, things like that, we can get them in a way that everybody's comfortable with, or at least a lot more people will be comfortable with. Some people will probably find any uh, any of this kind of research to be creepy, which is fine. Maybe it is creepy, but uh, but it, it 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 at least won't have the PR problem of being from um, being tied in any way to aborted fetuses. And um, it also means that if, for example, you if you need a replacement organ or something like that, and you have enough lead time, you might be able to just get a skin, a skin scrape uh, from you, take those cells, um, and through various processes, uh, reintroduce pluripotency to them, and and suddenly we're able to grow livers or hearts or anything else that you might need with your own genetics. Uh, that's, that's exciting. It means we, we don't need to get at, uh, gametes or anything like that from you. Uh, you can just do a skin scraping. Awesome. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting area of research uh, and people have made great strides in it in the last few years. Uh, we expect them to keep making great strides and it, it probably in another 20 or 30 years, people will be able to grow organs um, from uh, that, that share uh, people's genetics from, from such uh, simple collection methods. So yeah, there, there are just some areas of science that um, where the, it's just so exciting watching them move. There are other areas which are maybe a little bit more boring and they're more theoretical or the application is more obscure or esoteric. But not these. <clears throat> so yesterday, I didn't do a lot. I just kind of chilled. Today is probably going to be the same. So both. So yesterday, I spent a lot of time working on syllabi for the uh, program, uh, programming and other classes that I occasionally teach, um, some formal, some informal. I mentioned, I've mentioned several times that I'm working on YouTube versions of these, but I'm also working on new versions of the curricula uh, to, to teach more classes. And I'm focusing on, or at least uh, yesterday I was working on uh, teaching C and Unix, uh, separate, uh, separate courses. Um, so I had, I've taught people C before, but I think I can probably do it better. I'm working on uh, organizing my curricula uh, better for that. And I think I have a, 
I, I have the better ordering of the things, topics that I'm going to teach, and I'm working on better um, course materials. Um, for Unix, that's another thing which I've only taught informally so far. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm working on teaching it more formally. Uh, so I have three lines of classes that I'm going to be teaching with Unix. The first is just introduction, uh, introduction to Unix. What you need to, uh, what you need to know to be able to get around on a Unix system. Uh, that'll be the one, 100 series of courses. Right now I have course materials, at least some course materials, and syllabi for two classes there. There are two other um, course lines that I'll be teaching, the uh, 200 series, where I'm teaching a systems administration, and a 300 series, where I'm teaching uh, Unix uh, systems internals. I have at least initial uh, syllabi for those, and I've started on the course materials for them. It'll probably take me a while to, to really get those into shape. Uh, fortunately for those, I have a good body of existing materials, because at one point I was working on writing a book, and then I realized that basically everybody has written that book, or at least there are 20, 30, 50, 100 books written on, uh, on these topics, so the world probably doesn't need another one. But it probably could use uh, more teaching material. So I, I can reuse a lot of that stuff, but it does need to be retuned. Um, maybe it would just become uh, course materials that people could use. It's, it's bookish enough. It's complete enough to be more or less a book. It's just very, very unpolished. And also spent a little bit of time on uh, starting to figure out what uh, what, it, uh, what it's going to be like teaching uh, SQL. And I'm going to focus on Postgres because it's the best uh, open source database. Um, but but I'll, I will at least cover uh, um, SQLite and MySQL. Maybe Oracle and DB2 as well. I haven't decided. But uh, that stuff is coming together. Oh, oh yeah, you can actually see um, I, I have some of it online at, uh, what is it, trans, let me check the roll real quick. Is that right? Yeah, it's transitivetutoring.com. I have some of the syllabi up, including some of them that I just finished recently. Not all of them are up. Um, but yeah, you, you can see that stuff. It's, uh. I'm going to keep on developing it, and when I have the videos in a better state, I'll be providing links to them on YouTube here, and I'll, I'll keep on updating the, uh, the pointers so that it's always pointing at the most current, or at least my favorite version of the videos that I've produced so far. I'm not quite ready to do that yet because I'm still not satisfied with, uh, with the videos. I'm not even sure how many of them I've put up so far. In any case, Fun stuff. Uh, uh, tomorrow and Sunday, uh, I'm going to the Northeast uh, Conference on Science and Skepticism, which should be interesting. Um, I've been a little bit wary of secular events recently because uh, of some cultural shifts that have been going on in the secular movements. Uh, it's not really cultural shifts, it's political shifts, but I mean the two are intertwined. Um, I've talked a lot about this on Google+. Uh, it's just there's a certain flavor of social justice activism that's not very tolerant of people who don't see the world precisely the way that they do. They define gender a certain way and they'll yell at you or teach you. If, if you define gender a different way, they'll define uh, justice a certain way, They'll, they, they have a whole bunch of definitions, and they claim the right to, well, I mean, they, they teach, again with quotes, people who, who, don't, who don't see things the same way, and they get very tiresome, because if you disagree with them, usually they're not going to use philosophical discourse to do the normal sparring back and forth, how should we define this, what's the best way to think about this? Um, they'll just uh, 
typically find some way to disqualify you from the conversation. Like, I'm not going to listen to anybody who's uh, who's white or who's straight or something. I mean, as, as it happens, I'm not straight, but uh, I they didn't know that in, in, in some of these meetings, and I, I got some of that. I mean, they, they just assumed, uh, which, I mean, I don't, I don't really mind that they, they would assume it's not like I wear my sexuality on my sleeve, but they just assumed that I'm uh, I'm straight. Uh, they and what really bothers me is that they thought that, that matters. I mean, why why do, does it qualify or disqualify my opinions that I've uh, slept with dudes? Uh, I mean, I haven't slept only with dudes, but uh, it's just it's not like that experience gives you enlightenment. I mean, it's fun, sure, uh, but it's just sex. And it's just sexual interest. It's not, uh, it, I mean, debate is about ideas. It's about discourse. It's about arguments. It's not about what kinds of life experiences you've racked up. And they've also, like CFI, I, I left the um, CFI um, affiliated events precisely because of this reason. They, they started to form a whole bunch of splinter groups that are, Qualified, meaning that uh, we have th this this meeting. You can't go to it unless you happen to be uh, non-straight, or unless you happen to be black, or ex-Muslim, or ex-Christian, or whatever. I just I don't think you build a community that way. That's not a healthy way to build a community. It just your identities shouldn't matter. You uh, you should build diversity just by being generally welcoming, and anybody who shows up should let them in and. Be friendly. You don't form, or at least you shouldn't form, specific intent to gather a, a cornucopia of different uh, identities. Identities aren't precious. People are. And in general, I mean, a lot of the time, identities suck, or at least they have problems. Uh, and this is one of the issues with a lot of activist movements. They end up deciding that it's so important to get people of certain flavors in that they'll accept whatever ideas are common uh, among that category of people. And sometimes you end up getting very nutty people and you end up swallowing whatever weird dogma they have just for the sake of having that type of diversity in your, in your organization. That's not healthy. It stifles discourse. It stifles honest evaluation of ideas that might be common in certain sub-communities. I mean, I'm not straight, but I avoid generally the the non-straight communities that are out there because they usually have a lot of this bullshit and I don't want to deal with it. Uh, I it, it's 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 not I, I don't want to deal with it in that I don't want to be exposed to it, but it's rather if I can't question it, if I can't talk about it comfortably, if it's a topic that they own, or if it's a topic where they they'll accuse me of being treasonous against my own sexual preferences or something like that if I don't agree with them on it. That's just obnoxious and uh, it's, it's rubbish. Or if they say, I have this identity, you better find it to be valid and awesome or you're oppressing me. It's like, no, that's not the way things work. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't have any use for those communities. Um, but on the, other, on the other hand, I do know a reasonable number of people in Nexus who, who are decent. So I'll be trying to avoid the people who I have problems with. Um, and uh, in either case, it's only two days. And let's see, on Sunday, uh, after the second day of Nexus, there's a viewing party for Cosmos that should be pretty neat. Um, there's also someone from out of town who I haven't met yet, but who's a friend of a friend who I'm going to hang out with on, uh, oh no, on, on next Tuesday. Should be neat. So that's pretty much what's, what has happened, what I'm looking forward to. So apart from continuing to work on the class materials, uh, I'm going to be looking a little bit more seriously for a job now, particularly given that it's been uh, about a month since I left the last job, and hopefully I'll be able to find uh, something that's uh, something that's decent. Um, no real rush, but 
it would be nice to uh, to have an income again. <clears throat> and to uh, and to know where my where my health insurance uh, what my health insurance is going to look like uh, after uh, Cobra runs out. Um, yeah, it's, it'll, it'll also be nice to uh, to be running a little bit more often. Uh, in, in international politics, uh, the Russian occupation of Crimea continues, and it looks like Russia's massing forces on its borders and continually uh, and continuing to uh, meddle in the politics uh, towards no. Uh, to to push for separatism uh, in uh, other Russian-speaking areas of the uh, of Eastern Europe, which is pretty worrying. More worrying is that again, it seems like the West is just tired and unwilling to uh, unwilling to do a lot about this kind of thing. Oh, here's the other cat. So we're just basically going to let Russia roll over uh, Eastern Europe, and we'll just wave our finger at them, <clears throat> which, yeah, I'm not of the sort that I think the, the West should always find to look, uh, should always try to look as strong as it can or be as aggressive as it can, but uh, projecting weakness to the extent that the West is right now, it's not, it's not a good thing. It's destabilizing for the world. Um, and I think it's a serious mistake. <clears throat> uh, or, or to put it another way, uh, it seems like the, the West is saying to Eastern Europe, uh, Willkommen bei Großrussland, um, which is a play on words on, uh, uh, yeah, well, welcome to, uh, to, to Greater Germany, which is one of the ideas that happened uh, not, not so long ago, where you, you had this concept that just because people are speaking the same language. Countries should nab bits of each other uh, of each other to make their national borders line up with linguistic borders. It's an ugly idea. Uh, but uh, then again, I'm, I don't run any nations. There's not a lot I can do about this. Um, Book-wise, I finished reading the first two books in the Watch uh, series. Uh, I think I talked about those last, uh, in the last uh, uh, in the last video blog. Um, good series. Uh, I, I was a little bit disturbed to find that one of the authors is a really crazy uh, level, uh, has a little, or has a really crazy level of Russian nationalism, and he, he supports the Russian occupation of Crimea, all that, but I guess you can't, uh, I mean, people could decide, I'm not going to enjoy this cultural content because I don't like who wrote it. Fine. Uh, I guess that's a reasonable perspective. Uh, it's a little bit stifling. It would mean that, for example, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to enjoy stained glass windows in churches because I don't approve of churches. But, um, but no, I, I'm I'm not of that sort. I, I'm happy to uh, enjoy cultural content even if I'm not comfortable with uh, every bit of where it came from. In any case, yeah, the second book was good. The first book was good. I found. Uh, it to be very different from the movie. I thought the movie was neat, and I, I saw the movie first just as a random watch on Netflix. Um, but the books are a lot better, and I have come to under uh, I've come to see how much uh, the movie ended up bastardizing the content of the books. So I guess that isn't unique to Hollywood. It, it happens in Russian uh, cinema as well. It's probably just a universal rule. Like you, you have these this broad tapestry of characters, and uh, if you're going to make a movie, oh, well, let's make it more dramatic. We'll make this person suddenly related to this person and uh, stick in things about somebody's lonely past, because everybody has to have a lonely past, uh, and, and all that kind of thing. It's, it's very predictable. It's very irritating. Um, I really hate how tight movies have to be. Um, but I, I guess that's, um, I'm actually not sure why it's done. Maybe it's, maybe it is legitimately that we theoretically prefer 
that if I had never seen, um, or if I, if I had never read the books that the Watch series is based off of, um, I probably wouldn't mind. I probably wouldn't have noticed. Uh, but it's it's only when I compare the books to the movies that that the, uh, that the movie suddenly feels like it, it comes way short. But also, just the, the book spends a lot more time developing an elaborate uh, uh, mythos and uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, I mean there's just a lot of detail on how that world works how social strata and other strata um, work I guess this really doesn't make a lot of sense unless you've read the book and seen the movie but uh, yeah in English the uh, day watch and night watch they're on Netflix or is it well I, I think those are, uh, that's right uh, and um, uh, and there are, are uh, similar books that most of which have been translated into English uh, that you can get on uh, on uh, Amazon for your Kindle, or you can probably get them in book format too. So that's that's what I've been reading. Uh, I'm still kind of looking for a, a new uh, 1440p 17 inch laptop, but they really don't seem to exist yet. Um, I guess right now it wouldn't be smart to buy that anyhow, given that I'm still between jobs. But that probably won't persist for too long. I expect to be job again pretty soon. And there are jobs, opportunities that I've just uh, turned down. It, it would be great if. Uh, if that opportunity that uh, that the, uh, that the friend was recommending me for, if they end up calling and we end up interviewing and it works out, but I'm not going to count on that. Uh, I, mean, I guess there's the possibility that I could just really try and put together what I need to make a living uh, teaching, but I don't know if I really want to deal with uh, with recruiting uh, with recruiting people. For my classes, that's just a major pain in the butt. I mean, it's uh, putting together course materials. That's fun, haggling over prices and dealing with people's schedules and putting up flyers and, and all that. Organizing people. That's just all right. Um, Food-wise, things are going pretty well. Uh, I've uh, been doing some more experiments with cooking, trying to make. Uh, samosa closer and closer to scratch. Had some kind of epic disasters in those attempts. Uh, I mean, not disasters, but just they hasn't been particularly good food. Uh, I really could just use somebody uh, to to show me how to how or at least to work with me for a while through making some of these Indian recipes. Um, I haven't been making a lot of progress on knitting. For some reason, I, I just uh, I make it home and I I'll get the needles out and I'll spend a little bit of time uh, working on it, but I'll get distracted by something else, uh, which is unfortunate because there are some things which I really really need to learn to knit. Um, I have a foam sock that protects my phone, but it wasn't uh, designed for my phone. It was made by an ex-girlfriend and it was made for a smaller phone that I used to have. And uh, for the Nexus 5, it doesn't reach all the way up, and it's starting to come apart, probably because it's both getting a little bit old and it's been through pretty constant use, but it's, uh, it's not big enough. And the stretching probably has made it come apart uh, quicker. So I need to knit a replacement, and I really, really should get up to the level where I can do that uh, soon. I, I know that it would probably take a few hours at, at least to knit. It might, might take even a day or, or two, but... Um, also, that reminds me, I, I did, um, I've been trying to think about what type of app I would like to write for my first Chromecast app. Because I, I've been playing with, uh, with writing other types of apps for Android and, and so on. Um, I haven't yet done anything with Chromecast, uh, but I, I've been wanting to. And I think I would like to experiment with, um, so the Kindle app. Is pretty nice on, on a tablet uh, for, for reading uh, for reading books, uh, but 
and, and it feels pretty natural uh, uh, to me by this point to be sitting in a chair, just swipe my finger across the screen whenever uh, I want to see the next page or just tap the side of the screen and have it scroll. Great. Uh, but when I'm at home, I, I think I would like to try, uh, I I'd like to see what it would be like to read books um, on the TV. Now the TV isn't really oriented right, it's far, it's wider than it's tall. Um, maybe it would make sense if, if this really works out to get another TV and orient it the other way. Um, but I, I wonder what it would, would be like to read books on such a large, uh, large device and whether it would feel natural to swipe on the tablet to control it, even if I'm not reading it on the tablet. So it would be a neat experiment, and that seems like a neat first step. Now, I don't think I would necessarily be able to do it with Kindle books, because I'm not going to be able to extend a Kindle app, or the Kindle app to do that. But I have enough PDFs um, that I, I would like to read or reread um, that I could uh, try it with those. It probably wouldn't be hard to write a PDF reader. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and whip something like that together. Uh, I don't know, probably over the next few weeks. Um, I may have a lot of other things that I would like to learn. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, to start learning Scala. I might do that later today. I'm probably going to head out to a coffee shop for a few hours. Uh, I guess it's four. Um, one of the coffee shops I like, uh, Vineapple, uh, up in Brooklyn Heights. I think it's open until eight. Um, I might get started on Scala. Uh, if, if I don't end up doing more uh, more preparation for classwork. Because, yeah, just there's something really exciting about putting together classwork, laying out the knowledge that you have in the most elegant form, in the form that's best for teaching. Um, I, I like it. It's, it's a lot of fun. The downside of that is that I need to bring my main laptop with me rather than my, my Chromebook. Uh, but that's fine. It's, just, it's a little bit heavier, but so on. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, I'll see you in the next uh, next video blog in in a week. Uh, and uh, I mean, oh, oh yeah, I guess I should mention I have. Uh, I'm getting. I'm finally getting near the end of my Let's Play for Fallout Three, which is good because I'm I'm getting a little bit bored of it. I'm not really sure whether it's that interesting to look at anyhow, but I want to do it. I got started. I'm gonna finish it up. Um, but I think I have maybe one or two more videos left that I'm going to do. I've done all the DLCs but one. I've done uh, some of... I've gotten past the, the end of the main game, but there's uh, there's the Adams Air Force Base, uh, which I think that's what it's called, uh, which is really such a fantastically fun area that I'd like to play through it. Um, but after that, I'll, I'll be done with that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing more Let's Plays. If, if people decide that they like them, uh, they could probably nudge me and maybe tell me what game they'd like, uh, like uh, to see me go through. If not, it was just a fun experiment. Uh, I haven't really ever gotten a whole lot of feedback on any of these things. Yeah, but, but that's it. I'll, I'll see you uh, next Friday. Uh, with my next uh, video blog entry. Ciao!